Hey everyone, Joshua Killeen here again with Our Tiny Homestead. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching our videos. Thanks for sharing them. And thanks for spreading the word regarding what's going on in our rural areas across the nation. Uh, we're going to start today's video with a couple questions or a few questions. Are, do you support self-sustainability? Do you believe in homesteading? the right to build your own home, live the way you want to on your own property. We're going to talk today about the who, what, and why uh, these rights are being taken away from us across the United States, especially in our rural areas. Um, we're going to talk about why this is happening, how this is happening, and what you can do to stop it. Uh, because the only people that can stop it, if you want to retain these rights, the only people that can stop it are you. Us, we, the people that live in these rural communities, we, the people that want to live outside of cities, that want to live the way that we want to live, that want to live in harmony with the environment, that want to build a sustainable home using sustainable materi materials, recycled materials. Uh, for those of us that want to live that way, we need to start now. We need to speak up now or we are going to lose those rights forever. There's not an if, it's, it's a win. And win is now, it's happening right now. So, I did a recent live video dedicated to the Arizona Rural Landowners Association Facebook page. That's uh, our organization that we formed in our state and our area to fight back against this uh, overreach of local government. Um, I did a live video and we touched on a few things. It's been a while since we did a YouTube video. Uh, thanks for your patience and again, thanks for bearing with us. Um, so in that live video, I talked about a letter that I received from Supervisor Craig Brown. He's District 4 Supervisor for our county. And he is responding to a request that we made at a public town hall that we attended as a community excuse me, as, an, as a community, as an organization, where we requested that our county adopt the same owner-builder amendment that Cochise County, another county in Arizona, has already adopted. Um, it's an owner-builder amendment that allows property owners with parcel sizes of four acres or more to opt out of paying all the county fees and the county inspections and doing all of that. It allows you the ability to, and I'm gonna paraphrase here, to use creative thinking and using creative and alternative materials to build a home the way the owner, according to owner preferences, basically. Um, we requested that officially at a public uh, town hall meeting and they acted at the time like they were seriously going to consider it. And in the interim, they also acted like they were doing research. They sent us one update email um, that they're giving it a lot of thought. And so this was his response when we finally, three months later, um, from Supervisor Craig Brown. Mr. Colleen, we have completed our research on your concerns regarding the rural constituency. As I am sure that you are aware of, there are many moving parts involved when considering a county code compliance change. After considerable review and researching of building codes for the rural areas, it has been determined that the adopted codes for Yavapai County should remain in place. Attached is a memo from David C. Williams, Director of Development Services, which will provide the reasons for our determination. So after, and I'm gonna read some excerpts from that memo for you here. Um, but it sounds like David Williams was the one that did all the consideration. Um, and the Board of Supervisors, specifically Craig Brown, just agreed with him. Now I wanna, I wanna go off track a little bit here by saying there is something, there's no doubt in my mind and many of our minds here in Arla that there's something going on between the Board of Supervisors and, and David Williams. With all of the things and as many complaints as this horrible man has had against him, I mean, we're talking hundreds of people who are, who are very, very upset with this person for what he is doing, David Williams. They're protecting him. They're still taking legal advice. He's not an attorney, but he is giving them legal advice in violation hearings, legal advice in their determination hearings, and, they, and they're accepting everything he says as gospel. If you were in one of these hearings, 
um, where you were listening to David Williams talk and, and watching how the Board of Supervisors reacted to what he was saying, you, your mind would be blown. They act as if, the, if his word is, is gospel and everything that he says is truth and he does give legal advice to them in those hearings. He does. And it's been on recorded, they're all public recorded hearings. We have proof of this. So this is what he said. The ISO rating, which is the county's insurance services office rating, um, that pre-2005, there were no building codes in rural areas in Yavapai County. So when they adopted building codes, there was a significant discussion, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm taking a little bit out of David Williams' memo. There was a significant discussion with the Board of Supervisors in regards to the county's insurance services, or insurance office rating. Um, if you downgrade, so the downgrading of the ISO rating, the insurance services office rating, could create a financial hardship for limited income families and the elderly as well as their ability to qualify for loans. Significant negative shifts in the ISO ratings in other communities across the country have made homes unaffordable overnight when the shifts have occurred. So I'm done reading out of his memo, and I'm gonna say 100% bull So when you mention uh, significant or negative financial impacts on limited income families. Are you referring to like when the 81 year old couple that has been out here for almost two decades, uh, they're disabled on a fixed income. When you leaned, when you find them over $7,500 and then sent that fine to collection so they now have a lien on their house for $9,700 plus. Are you talking about financial hardships like that, David Williams? Because to me, that, that is, that's not a possibility of a financial hardship. That is a financial hardship that you and your department and your ridiculous building codes for rural areas have caused. Are you talking about financial hardships like uh, the one that we're facing, my family, who tried to operate a small home-based business? Um, we were pre-advertising to help pay for all the ridiculous permitting fees that you make us pay to operate a business on our own property. And because of the fact that you illegally forced us to stop advertising via threats of multiple $7,500 fines, we almost bankrupted ourselves because we had a plan that was working and you forced us to stop advertising, violated, violating our commercial free speech. Are you talking about financial hardships like that? I, I think I see where you're coming from if that's the case. Sorry for that rant, guys, but that's what's happening here. They are, they are mincing words and they are, they are using David Williams to, to make all of these decisions on how we live as the people that actually live here, the people that vote for these, board, for these supervisors, they aren't listening to us. So now we are taking the next step and this video is a call to action. So we're gonna talk about more, more of their whys. So, so you heard their reasonings as far as why they would not adopt a similar amendment that another county adopted. They had no problem with, with it when the people spoke up. The people spoke up saying what they wanted and they were persistent and that county adopted an owner builder amendment for parcel sizes of four acres or more, which makes perfect sense. So, this being said, there's, there's a few other reasons why. They're saying that they want to have control over how we live on our homesteads, in our rural areas, in our rural communities. They want to control where your fences go. They want to control how big your house is, what your house is made out of. They want to control what kind of lights you have on your front porch. Even though we have zero county infrastructure, city infrastructure in our area. We are 100% off grid. We take care of ourselves. We take care of our own roads. We supply our own water. We supply our own power. Even though we are the ones doing all of that, they still want to have control over everything, everything. We're not going to take it anymore. We're not going to let them continue to have that control. And it's time for all of us to take back that control. So they're saying that um, it's unsafe. They want to make sure that we're safe. They, they have straight up said that they don't, they don't even want us to have friends and family to our property uh, because they don't know if it's safe. 
They, they, don't, they don't know if it's safe. So uh, they are treating us like criminals in these violation hearings that they're taking us and other people in our community to. They are putting us in this uh, phony court, this uh, dog and pony show court that they have. It's not a court, it's a, it's a hearing. Um, without any officers of the law, without any uh, sworn in judges, without juries, without any of that. This is just the board of supervisors, uh, planning and zoning boards, uh, planning and zoning commissions, and the director of development services. So, so they're treating us like criminals for how we live or how we want to try to live. You know what? I'm going to show you guys something. I'm going to show you guys something. It's going to get a little choppy here. So this is just one example. So here's our home. Unconventional. Yeah, we turned a shed to a house. Shed to house. You heard about that movement? So this is just our living area. Really unsafe. Super unsafe. It's, it's trashy. It's a dump. They don't think that we have the ability to live a clean, healthy lifestyle. So we provide our own water, working on rain catchment. That's, that's horrible for the environment, right? They're worried about our impacts on the environment. They're worried about the impact that we might have on our neighbors. Just take a little gander there. This is half of our property, not even half. Let's take a little gander. There's our shed out there. Sorry for the wind, guys. I'm going to take you into our kitchen and our living space. Oh no, it's two spaces connected. That's not to code. Yeah, this is a horrible. Oh, sorry for the dishes. You can tell my wife's not home. This is a horrible, unsafe, trashy, uncomfortable environment that's not suitable for habitation. That's what they're saying. All right, let's take a walk outside the front door really quick here. All right. So let me give you a little panoramic view here. There are no public roads connected to my property. These are all privately maintained roads that we take care of ourselves to get out here. You cannot see any neighboring properties. Here's our little tiny homestead right there. It's winter time. Everything's kind of gray. Looks really beautiful here in the spring. We are on 20 acres here and you cannot throw a rock as hard as you can and even hit any neighboring properties from where I'm standing right now. All right, let's head back in. Again, there's our fur fan. That's Sally, Mama Kitty. And we have things connected by a breezeway here. Okay, folks, thanks for going on that little adventure with me. So, homes like ours, and I haven't really spoke about our situation in our previous YouTube videos because I've been focusing on helping the other families and the other people in the community and in our area that have reached out to me to try to raise awareness. But I thought I would share, it's been a while since our first few videos where I kind of shared how we live and what we're building here. And so what you just saw is, is total anathema to the county. It's, it's unsafe. It's, it's not conventional. And there's no way that you're going to make those buildings safe. So first off, we made it through the uh, harshest winter storm that this state and this area has had since 1914. Our house didn't so much as creak. It didn't shift. Nothing moved. There was no damage. Everything was, our, our pipes didn't freeze. Um, we were warm. We were cozy. We were safe and didn't have any issues. While these prefab homes or modular homes or um, you know, uh, even track home neighborhoods in the city, people were freaking out. There were so many accidents. Pipes were bursting. Roofs were collapsing because of the snow loads. But yet we are living unsafe. So they are saying that we, you, me, we the people that want to live outside the box, um, don't know how to take care of ourselves. 
That's what they're saying. They're taking our rights, our responsibility, and our control over, over taking care of ourselves out of our hands. This isn't a political group. This isn't a political channel. Um, this is a common sense channel. And what's happening across our nation is, is these things, people that want to be taken care of and want to have their decisions made for them, that's fine. I'm not judging you. But there are those of us that don't. And we reserve the rights to manage our lives ourselves. So, so those are the whys. Those are some of the, the reasons why they're saying that they, that they don't think that we can, uh, we can do this ourselves. They don't think an owner builder amendment makes sense in our area. Well, I say, that's what I say. I say you're wrong. And I say, let's talk about the who. The person that is saying, <clears throat> excuse me, the person that is saying that we don't know how to take care of ourselves. Um, you know, I may get in some trouble here. I'm, I'm getting more and more, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I've become radicalized by this situation. I'm not a radical. Um, I'm not violent. I don't wish harm on anybody. On anybody. David Williams, Director of Development Services, you are a horrible human being. You're a liar, you're a crook, you are corrupt, and we are not gonna, we're not going to let you continue to have control over our lives. All right, making a few cuts here. Getting pretty passionate. So the person who's trying to take our ability to care for ourselves, or our right to manage our own lives, our own safety, our own homes, our own properties, out of our hands, is David Williams, Director of Development Services. He is a crook. There's, there's no other way to put it. He's a corrupt crook. He's a crooked individual. And we're going to go into a little bit more about this person. Um, it seems that he, he's not held responsible for, for his actions, the things he does, the things he is doing. And we're going to change that. We're going to make sure everybody knows what kind of person you are, David Williams. Um, so I've been lucky enough to uh, have a few interviews with people that used to work directly with David Williams, not that long ago, actually, very recently. And there are five, at least five that I know of, people that worked directly with David Williams who are no longer in their positions, not because they were fired, not because they were disgruntled employees, not because they have behavioral issues, because they realize what kind of person David Williams is, was, and is, and they had to get out of that situation. And I've been lucky enough to uh, speak with two of those individuals, and um, one of them worked directly with David Williams on calls, going out in the field, um, the, the other one worked uh, directly under David Williams when he assumed the position of Director of Development Services. So this person, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize here first and then I'm actually gonna play some clips of the audio interview that I had with one of these people. Um, he has constantly abused his position. He is, he is a power hungry control freak. He wants to have control over other people's lives. He's had issues with harassment in, in his position, in his own department. He's had a woman leave her position because she was uncomfortable around him. He has had another person leave, just disappear off the face of the planet for, for no apparent reason, who was directly involved in the county uh, permit and code enforcement. Um, he has thrown other people who weren't uh, fired from their position, who moved on to other positions under the bus based on decisions or because of decisions that were made by development services in the past, and he's used them as patsies. And he, he wears a badge and a gun in office, which is his right. Uh, but to me, that seems like he is really trying to be a law enforcement officer. Now, let's be, let's be clear. Code enforcement is not law enforcement. These are not laws. These are codes and ordinance that were, ordinances that were put into place 
to make revenue, to give you a job, David Williams, to give your county code inspectors a job. So in one of the town hall meetings, we asked the question as to why the minimum lot sizes in our rural area were changed from 10 acre, from RCU 10A, that was the designation prior to, uh, actually prior to 2017, I believe, 2017, 2016, these were minimum 10 acre parcel sizes in our area. We brought up a question, and this has been going around and around in circles with a lot of, a lot of uh, not so much true answers from the county. Um, we asked them why they had changed. If they weren't planning any developments in our area, we asked them why would they change the minimum parcel sizes from 10 acres to two acres? Why would they do that? They said that didn't happen. They said, that's a mistake, that's a typo. Well, at first they said, that's not true. We don't know what you're talking about. And then we brought in publications and proof that it was, at least on their website and in the, uh, the violation notices that we received, our designation was RCU 2A, but when we purchased the property, the designation was RCU 10A. We asked them why then, after we brought in proof, and they said, oh, that must be a typo. So I wanna make a request to the people that know what David Williams is doing, that are still protecting him. I, 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 wanna, I wanna show you how, how he treats, you know, how, where his loyalties lie. They lie with himself and covering his own ass. That's where they lie. So Tammy DeWitt, who is a senior planner for development services, who no longer works with them, who just disappeared, just left, um, resigned or found a new position, moved on. Um, she, she is, we, we spoke with her. We tried to call and ask her about why this was happening, why there was so much misinformation, why are we getting some answers, uh, certain answers from some people and different answers from other people. We asked her why, and she still protects David Williams. She still blames it on us, the property owners, treats, acts like we're doing something wrong, like we're breaking the law. Well, uh, when asked about that parcel size change, and where the typo came from, Tammy DeWitt, David Williams threw you under the bus. He threw you right under the bus with a smile on his face. And I want you to know what he said. So we're looking for that we have a recording of this, so I'm gonna paraphrase again, um, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm damn close to what he said. Uh, there is a reason Tammy DeWitt is no longer with development services. She made a lot of mistakes. So he blamed the typo, they called it, of the RCU 2A designation on you, Tammy DeWitt, and said you were mistaken when now we do have proof that it was changed to RCU 2A. Lies, deceit, corruption, it's running rampant in our local governments. We're not gonna take it anymore. You guys can play these games all you want, we're not gonna play them. I've been lucky enough to have a couple of different interviews with people that work directly with or directly under David Williams. Now, these aren't people that uh, were fired uh, for behavioral issues. These weren't people that quit disgruntled employees. These are people, uh, one of them still, uh, uh, still is in a position, uh, so we're gonna keep them pretty anonymous. Um, but the other one no longer works for Yavapai County. He's been very helpful. And uh, he, he also knows what kind of person David Williams is. He is very passionate about getting somebody that's going to abuse their power like that, somebody that is so corrupt out of that position. Um, so that's two people, and there are at least three others that I know of that just disappeared off the face of the planet. They moved on to other positions. Uh, there wasn't any reason given. And I know that there have been harassment issues uh, between David Williams and female uh, employees or fem female members of that department. Um, I also know that he walks around with a badge and a gun uh, in the office on a daily basis, um, which is his right in the state, which is totally fine. But he, according to these people, um, acts as if he is a law enforcement officer as well as an attorney. Um, he has done this in public recorded hearings. He has given legal advice to the Board of Supervisors in public recorded hearings. He has uh, called and phoned and threatened people in our community with the full force, I'm gonna quote, with the full force of the law behind him. He has threatened to throw people in jail. Now this, this, these are county codes, again. I know I already touched on this. These are county codes. Um, he has, 
and we're going we're going to go into some audio recording here uh, from somebody that worked directly under David Williams regarding how he um, interacted with the mayor fire. We had a big fire a few years back in this area and, and what he did, I believe it was 2016 or 2017, what he did is atrocious. It's, it, it, it just blows my mind. So I want you to take a quick listen here. This is regarding how he feels that county code enforcement should be doing business. This is, this is what our Director of Development Services does to the people he's supposed to serve. Have a listen, guys. Well, first off, thanks, thanks so much for your time. And yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for being willing to help with all this craziness that's going on. Oh, sure. <laughs> I understand totally. Uh, Dave's been, you know, he, he was a total jerk and uh, just, just not a very nice person. And that's why I, I left the county when I did. And along with another, a lot of other people who either switched departments or went out and just got another job because they couldn't deal with him. So, so Jacob Lane was the was the actual uh, enforcement officer, the code enforcement officer that came out to our property. Right. Uh, because that, and he worked for Rebecca Borowski and Tammy DeWitt was the lead planner. And right. all three of them are gone within not even two years. Yeah, they'll tell you something. <laughs> exactly, and and it, yeah. you know what? Big they well, they started leaving right when we, our, our Arizona Rural Landowners Association, and and our tiny homestead started putting them on blast. And and there was a lot of heat. There's still a lot of heat on the county, and all of a sudden, all these people are just disappearing. No explanation, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, either Dave's getting them to resign or that he's putting so much heat on them that they're going elsewhere. She was letting me know about some other stuff that ha had went on because um, we stayed in contact since I left the county. And she said, you know, a lot of the inspectors have either left or because or, I, was, I was a building inspector. Right. And initially I worked for uh, Steve Mock, who was actually a good guy. That's he what I've been told. Me. That's what I've been told. Yeah, he would work with people. He wasn't an out to get you kind of guy. He was like, "Look, we all got to live here. Let's all get along. Let's let's find a common ground. Let's you know, everybody has to compromise a little bit. But as long as the code and the code is good, and we can find ways to work with the code, we're we're good, you know." And uh, Dave is exactly opposite. It's like, "I'm going to get you. I'm going to be I'm going to be a cop on this. He wants to be a police officer so bad. Well, he's he tried before. We've gotten that information. Yeah, actually one. Yeah. One of our lead members was a lead de was a senior detective in Queen Creek when oh. when David Williams was trying to he knows David Williams David Williams yeah. doesn't remember him but he was there when he tried becoming a police officer and he couldn't yeah he couldn't cut there was him. no way <laughs> he was he couldn't pass psych psych evaluation because no, he has it's huge bad. chip on his shoulder it, I feel like I'm in a movie right now I didn't even realize people like this truly existed yeah. you know well that's why they write movies about people like this because there are people like this he has told me that she has actual actual documentations a documentation of him uh him undermining people um lying a lot of a lot of lies because he's he of doesn't course. even try to cover up his lies. He just lies. Of course. She's got a, a lot of uh, documentation of him lying about and making up things. Uh, like she, I remember I, I took her to Crown Keen one time with me because I, I was going up there to do a couple inspections, and he sent her up there to do some court, code enforcement stuff. And we talked about it, and she said, you know, he uh, will frequently uh, take documents and throw them out or – or, you know, make sure that there's no, trying to cover his, his trail, more, uh, so to speak. Right, so uh, there's no record. Yeah, so when he is, like, told somebody, you know, you can't do this, or you can't do that, like he did it all the time, telling people they couldn't build in a, a floodplain. Well, that's wrong. You can build in a floodplain. You, you can just can't get in insurance. Area with proper engineering. Right, and, and it's just hard to get insurance. That's, yeah, that, that's, on, that's, that's, on, that's, on, that's on the builder. Right, you can totally do it. There's waivers for it. There's everything, um, and he consistently told people, "No, it's in a flood. You can't build there." No, you can build there. That's wrong. That's that's totally false. You can build there with proper engineering, 
the proper insurance and waivers and things like that. There's ways around all of that. Um, so he was, that's just when he was with, uh, you know, in the position he was in before, just code enforcement. Right. We didn't have to deal with him a whole lot. Cause as I said, Steve mock was there, you know, we were our, we were a separate division. Right. The minute he took Steve Mock's position, we had to deal with him on a weekly basis of him coming in and, and just changing the rules. I'm like, you can't change the code book. The code he, book is nationwide. He, he, it's a huge power trip. It's a huge, it huge power trip. And he's just doing what he wants because the reason we – so he owns that planning development consulting company. Right, which, which is a conflict. Which is a huge conflict of interest. He also right. he also does a lot of drone stuff. and. Uh -huh. And he, he swears up and down that drones are not being used for cone enforcement, which we know that they are, or at least oh, yeah. aerial photos are being used for code enforcement, and that's not within their purview. They're not supposed to do that. Right. And Craig Brown is protecting him. Yeah. And I, and I don't get that. <laughs> we just got a letter back. We find after, When I got back from Thanksgiving, I had a letter waiting for me. We, Arizona Rural Land Owners Association, um, asked both David Williams and Craig Brown, if we can adopt an owner-builder amendment, just like Cochise County has, that allows owner-builders to opt out. Of course, now, if they want to sell the property, if they want to sell a home, they'll have to come into all types of compliance. But if it is for personal use, and it is your home development, and you are over, I think it was either four acres or six acres, you can opt out of all but state uh, fire... Uh, environmental EPA uh, um, right. and and we asked them to do that and he came back and said David Williams doesn't think it's a good idea so we will be after almost a month of waiting um, uh, yeah uh, David Williams doesn't think it's a good idea so he says we're going to keep the codes the way they are I mean, you are our district supervisor you are supposed to go to bat for your constituents and your constituents are saying that right. we want that to change uh -huh. But David Williams gets to just say no, right? Right. So Which we, makes me wonder if they're not in cahoots somehow, you know, it, some kind of vested only, interest or something. That's the only thing we can think of, and we're yeah. we're not, you know, we're not a bunch of raving farm folk with pitch, pitchforks and torches. We're trying to do this legitimately. Right. Rebecca just up and took off, and she got a job in Payson. It was like adios, and. Uh, and I discussed this, and you know, maybe she'll bring it up, maybe she won't. But I, th we think that Dave was pressuring Rebecca um, sexually because uh, he always wanted her around. Uh, it was, you know, she she got favoritism, stuff like that, and we think that because uh, because Dave has, you know, had a lot of girls around him, he makes he he purposely does that he seems and like kind of a pig to be honest with you yeah 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 he's a pig he's a total pig and jerry and everything but she's even said she's felt very uncomfortable around him like he invades your personal bubble a lot <laughs> for, for whatever reason invasive. and it's it's only with women he doesn't do that with men he won't even, you know he, he won't it's not like he's a close talker uh with guys but with women he invades their personal bubble a lot and uncomfortable all the time but she always thought that she used to tell me she goes i think there's something going on between dave and rebecca i don't know why but i think it's you know i think they're like <laughs> so we had to discuss that um wait for her to bring that up i don't i don't want to start any rumors or anything i'm just telling you what no these, this is all and, information that's relevant and and yeah. you know it's just the feelings about a person it establishes a pattern with this guy it, it does it, I will say this, um, that I watched him cover for one of his buddies who's a, who's a, uh, uh, a building inspector. We, uh, we caught the guy moonlighting, caught him taking bribes. There was several of us uh, uh, building inspectors who caught him doing this. I mean, uh, you know, Lee Bolger, he, he uh, actually accepted a truck from a contractor that he inspects houses from, a brand new Duramax 4x4 lifted truck brand spanking new uh he accepted from oh a contractor my, oh my that just gosh. gave him a gift and i'm like that's inappropriate that's that's bribery right there this guy goes out and inspects his and david houses. williams allowed it 
What's that? And David Williams just let it get brushed under and the rug. He allowed it. He brushed. He brushed it off. He said nothing because him and Lee are friends. You know, and Lee Lee does all his dirty work for him. You know, so and the rest of us were like, you know, so this guy's untouchable now, and he's making the rest of us look bad. And so at that point, that's when I went, okay. And then uh, Dave put a tracking device in in a couple of our vehicles, and uh, one day he he brought me in. He goes. Uh, uh, Jim, I, I I need to know why you're going to this uh, every every uh, week. You're going to this printing uh, place over here in Prescott Valley. I go printing place. He's like, yeah. I said, I don't go to a printing place right there. I said, there's a there's a check cashing place right next door. It's the only ATM out in my area, and I go there to get cash for lunch. I said, why would you think I was going to a printing place? Well, I just thought maybe you were making copies of documents and stuff. I said, oh, so you thought I was getting evidence on you? Is that it? No, no. I said, yeah, it is. Because at this point, we had already established that we were not friends, you know. Right. So, so he was scared that I was making copies to, to, uh, to like, paint him into a corner or something. He's so paranoid. Oh, my and gosh. I was, like, I was like, that's ridiculous, dude. I said, so obviously you've got a GPS tracker on my truck because you know where I'm at at what time of day. I said, who else are you tracking? And then we found out he was tracking anybody that, that didn't That's, agree with him, basically. Th- is that legal? <laughs> um, it, it is if you are if, – if in his position, he was allowed to do it because I checked on it. Um, if, if you've been reprimanded for uh, – uh, somebody's called in and said you're going too fast. If uh, you're not in your area, you're allowed to um, – you're supposed to stay in your area when you're inspecting uh, within certain parameters. Like you huh. can't be out of your area too far. I think it's within a, uh, a five mile parameter or something like that. You got to be within your area that you're inspecting. Okay. And, and, you know, and I was never out of my area, but he, you know, he wanted a, a GPS tracker on me. So, so who knows what he told them I was doing? He could have told them, "Oh, somebody said he was speeding." Uh, they called in this truck number or whatever. Right. He, you know, the, anonymous the complaint. Yeah, that's that's right. that's kind of what they do. That's that's yeah. right up their alley. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't really. I mean, they don't really need probable cause like a police officer would. They can just do it, make up something, and say, you know, here, here's here's what I got. I got a tip. Okay. I got an anonymous tip. So they put a GPS tracker in my company vehicle, and which they're allowed to do. And then next thing I know, he's questioning me on stuff and still didn't have any any grounds to stand on. But uh, it showed me how paranoid he was. And then before he before Steve Mock stepped down and passed away, which was weird, um, <laughs> uh, Dave was out in um, – when they had the big fire out there in uh, – uh, what is it? Uh, the mayor area. They had the big mayor fire right. a few years ago. Yep, okay, yep. So, so Dave had, hadn't yet got his position. He was still just in code enforcement. And he went out there with a couple of the girls, uh, I think is who it was. He went out there and was um, ordering the sheriff's deputies to do this and do that. And they said, who are you? <laughs> he goes, I'm Dave Williams. Blah, blah. And he flashed a badge. Why does he have a badge? And he had a gun on his hip. And the cops are immediately like, well, who are you? Because I, I we saw you pull up in a county vehicle, but we don't know who you are. So I'm Dave Williams. I'm head of code enforcement. And they go, well, what are you doing here? He goes, I'm making sure that uh, uh, that these people are uh, in, in not in code violation. He goes, and the police officer and the fire chief handling the situation, you know, this, this place is on fire. We don't really give a big rat's ass about your code enforcement right now. We're trying to get people and animals out of this area. Oh, my and Dave, gosh. Dave, yeah, I know. Dave was wanting to go in while the people weren't there and, and, and write them up for code violations. Oh, my God. Jay- that that area hadn't been inspected in a while and Dave was worried about it because of propane tanks and things like that. So if, if somebody's house caught on fire for tall weeds or uh, propane tanks not being far enough away from the house and things like that, that Dave would have gotten in trouble for it for not for not enforcing the code violation for weeds and stuff like that. Oh, so he was all hip on getting in there and writing these violations before the fire got there. <laughs> Dude, this this guy and, this guy just needs to go away. Oh, he's he's just bizarre. The other thing was, 
there was a it was right up in the news. You can look it up too. There was somebody who was trying flying a drone over the fire area and invading um, the airspace of the slurry bombers. Yeah, that they would be. They never would be... found out who that drone pilot was, and Dave was down in that area with the drone in the back of his vehicle, his county vehicle. Oh, that's yeah, that's a huge coincidence. Yeah, that's that's yeah. just yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that's really funny. That's hilarious. Oh and man! And we all knew it was Dave. We all were like, "Yeah, it was Dave." I guarantee it was Dave. So after listening to that, do you really feel that this person should be in control of how we live on our own property? Do you really believe that this person has our best interests at heart, our safety? He's flying a drone over airspace over an evacuated community as slurry pilots are trying to put out the fire and they can't because he's trying to bust people for minor code violations. So I call on you, the community, and people who know something about this, people who have worked directly with David Williams to do something about this. I'm doing something about it. Our organization is doing something about it. If we let people like this control our lives, plain and simple. There's no question about it. And we have the power to stop it. This is our home. These are our communities. If you are a rural landowner or somebody that just wants to support having the right and the ability to, to live a self-sustaining, off-grid or not off-grid, homesteading lifestyle, if you think that people should have the right to do this, if you do this, if you want to protect your rights to do this, please join our organization, help us fight the good fight. Uh, as always, thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for being willing to watch and share these videos. Please, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. And please, if you have any questions or want to show your support in any way, please reach out to us either A, via the YouTube channel, or B, uh, well, we have two different Facebook groups. We have the Our Tiny Homestead Facebook page, and then we also have Arizona Rural Landowners Association page, Arla. Uh, we're happy to have you. Uh, keep the spirit, and as always, thanks again for your support.